Welcome to Carlisle's Proposal Writer video demonstrating how Proposal Writer works. In order to access Proposal Writer, go to www.roofproposal.com. This is the page that you'll see, and you can click Go to App. Proposal Writer can be accessed with a username and password. It's the same username and password that you would use for the Carlisle website. Proposal Writer can be used with a tablet or on your desktop. So you need to log in and it will show you your list of projects that you have. Today we're going to talk about one project called Sealed Air. This is a project that we've already done, um, so instead of me typing in all of the information about the customer and the facility, it, it's already there. What you would do is you would start a new proposal fill in the customer information and the facility information. The facility information is what drives the report. So because we already have it, you can just hit edit and go back in it. So here is your general information. This is what you're going to name the proposal and this is what will show up on that front list for you. If you'll notice on the bottom there's a navigation bar and you will work your way through the navigation bar filling out the information to create your proposal. Notice at the top is your access information or your profile information. So in your profile, you can do a couple of things. Put your information in there that it, so it'll show up correctly on the front cover of the report. You can add your logo here as a JPEG. You can also add letterhead here. So once you have the logo and the letterhead in your profile, it will show up on every report. So you can change any information that you need at this location as well. So once your profile is set, you're ready to go. Okay, so we're going to go back into the report. We've got our general information. Now the customer information. So you can put your customer's logo here as well. And when you put the customer information, the customer may be located at one location and the facility at a different location. So when the customer information is in here and you're doing multiple fa uh, facilities at different locations, you can just go back and pull the customer information and then move on to the facility information. So the facility, the customer in this particular case is in North Carolina. The facility is in Pennsylvania. So we've entered the address of the facility so that it drives the map appropriately. It's the Google map that's coming in. So as it pulls the map in, um, what you'll see is the, the basic uh, Google map. You can move the map around by, um, by uh, holding your, your cursor. You can make it larger. You can make it smaller. By hitting this, it will expand the entire map so that you can just see the map on your, um, on your desktop or your tablet. And then you can work with inside of that. So in order to outline a uh, roof section, what you're going to do is you're going to hit Add Section. So we'll outline this area right here. You merely click a point. Click a second point. You need three points to, uh, to be able to make an area. And then you can see we have this small roof here outlined. So we will hit Save. And then we need to name that roof. Um, so we'll call that the North Wing and save that. So the way that this works is by section. So you're, you're filling out information on each section. So as you can see, there's multiple sections that have been put on this roof, um, and, and the one that's highlighted in yellow is the section that you're working in. So as you'll see, there's two areas that are beckoning you here with, um, with uh, flashing yellow. These two areas are areas where you can put in a point, which would be a penetration, um, a deficiency, um, could be just a detail, but it's you're going to put a point onto your section. So let's blow this up so that we can get into this particular area. So let's add a point. So we will add a point right here's event. And then it's asking, is there an issue with this location? If you hit no, that is just showing a detail and that's showing a free form area where you can explain what it is that you want the owner to see. So as an example, 
You may have an HVAC unit that you would have to lift with a helicopter. You, the owner doesn't go on his roof most likely, so you want to show him a picture of that, of that, that uh, unit so that you can explain to him that, you know, this unit is such that you'll need to get a, a helicopter if we re-roof this so that we can flash it properly. You can add photos by merely clicking on here. So if you're on your tablet on the roof, when you click on here, it'll go to your camera and then you can take a photo of whatever it is that you want to take and it will automatically populate in here. You can name this whatever you want. Um, uh, it's a free form so you can explain whatever, uh, whatever it is that you need to explain. And then you just hit save. So, as you can see, I, I called it HVAC. You can go back and edit this at any time, make any changes. Oh, look, I spelled detail wrong. So I can go back in there, spell detail correctly. Hit save again. And there I am. So now you want to add an area. Say you have ponding water or there's, there's something that's not just a point that you want to be able to add. So again, you need three points in order to be able to create an area. So we'll say that there's some ponding water over here. Whoop. Okay, so there we've got some ponding water. So we're going to save that. And it's asking again, is there an issue at this location? The answer to that is yes, it's ponding water. So here's where all your deficiencies are. So anytime that you put a point or an area, it's going to ask you that question. You can merely look through this list that is alphabetical and determine, um, pick, pick the item that is um, that you want to explain to the building owner. So there's ponding. It gives you a, a definition and a consequence of ponding water. It's asking the severity. In this case, we'll say it's moderate. Monitor it, and then you can hit save. You can also hit the photo if you want to hit the photo. Add a picture of something. And hit save. So if you hit this button again, it will shrink back down and you can continue on with the particular section information. So for every section, there's a recommendation. And notice that this, this yellow arrow is beckoning you down to remind you that there's information below that you need to complete. So for this particular section, we're just going to say repair. You can include a cost if you want to by, by merely toggle on or toggle off. If you do toggle off, there's, it will not show up in the report. If you toggle on, you can put an amount in there and it will show up in the report. What is the severity of this? This is moderate. Um, and here you can freeform whatever you want. You can type in there whatever you'd like. And then it's asking for composition. So this is to let the building owner know what is the composition of the existing system. And you build this simply by layers. So I generally work from the deck up. So type of deck, we'll say it's a plywood deck. Method of attachment, and then just add a new layer. So we've got some insulation. Put a thermal barrier down first. Got some gypsum board. And then just add your layers as you want to describe the particular uh, composition. Okay, so now that you have your composition there, if you've done a moisture survey, you can add a new moisture survey. If you did not add a moisture survey, then, um, then you wouldn't put one in and it will not show up on the report. So simply just fill out the information, anything with um, a little question mark or a down arrow lets you know that there's information there for, from you to, for you to pick from. So you can... Um, you know, fill this out as, as needed, the date that you did the survey, if the membrane or the insulation, 
um, is wet or dry um, and provide pictures um, with that as well. Okay, so we've worked on that section and now what we can do is um, move on to the cover letter. So we've tapped down below. Now, you can include a cover letter or not. If you don't want to include a cover letter, you can toggle it off or toggle it back on. There are a couple of examples of cover letters that um, are existing within the program. You do not have to use one of these. You can copy and paste from a Word document that you have. Um, these are just some examples that, that, you can, um, that you can add into it. So would you like to replace the existing cover letter text? Um, I'm going to say no, but if you would, you would just put yes. And you need to read through the letters because they're there's placeholders where you have to put information. So as an example, the building is made up of masonry and steel reinforced concrete construction with a number of stories. Okay, so you need to um, include the the number of stories. So everywhere where there's a, there's a, a hashtag, if you will, or a number sign, um, it's a placeholder. So just walk through this letter and fill out any information that is needed or delete or add or whatever you'd like to do to your cover letter. Then you can move right to the proposal. So as you can see on the proposal, there's our my logo, there's the customer's logo that I had loaded in there. And it'll take a few minutes for everything to come in because there was a lot of sections that was done on this particular report. But it'll bring that Google map in on the front page. And then as you walk through the report, what it'll do is it'll go section by section. So it gives you an overview at the beginning and then it'll go section by section. It'll outline everything that you put in the uh, sections from areas to points to deficiencies or details. Your cover letter is here. It gives you um, a little bit of a heat map. So when you've got multiple sections, it gives you a, a heat map. Um, it generally can only do up to eight sections per building and right now with deficiencies it can go up to 12 deficiencies per section um, and that is a Google limitation but we are we're working to get that rectified um, and in that in that heat map it, it gives you a table then that shows you um, you know, if you put costs in, what the costs are, you know, the different sections, so you can give costs for um, some items and not for others. There are disclaimers that are part of the program that are, um, that you cannot remove. And then what happens is it goes into each section. So section A is the main roof, and we've outlined a couple of issues there. As a matter of fact, we've outlined four issues, as you can see. Um, this is a, this is an area where uh, we want them to re-roof because it is the worst area of the building. Um, it gives you the composition, so what the composition is of the existing system that you've outlined in your program. And then here it starts with the description. So on the main roof, we've got um, uh, some repairs that need to be made, as you can see. We've got deteriorated coping. got drain bolt missing in a section. And we've got ponding water in that corner. So this is just running through the different uh, sections. So now you're into section B and it's going to outline the things there. So there's your composition, your recommendation, um, and then it goes into the issues. We've got a defunct unit there. So it's just a detail that the owner is going to get rid of. We've got some deck deficiency. And you can add up to three photos of each deficiency if you want. Um, it helps to explain it, especially if there's the same deficiency in multiple places throughout the, the roof. And then there's just different sections. So this will just run through all the different sections and the different deficiencies that you've outlined or the details that you've outlined. And that is how the report is organized. 
So at any time you can go back into an area. So say you look at the report and you go, Ooh, I don't, I don't really like that. I'm going to go back into uh, the roof section and change something. So it may take a minute for the Google uh, picture to come back in, but you can go in and adjust any line. So if you've outlined on the roof um, and it doesn't exactly match when you when you come back to your desktop you can go in and change that so as an example let's see this line here does not match up so what we'll do is we're gonna select um, this section here and notice how it lights up in yellow so if we want to edit that section then um, see how it it um, allows you to move the line so that it can you can move it so that it matches more perfectly to the existing condition. And then you merely hit save. So my recommendation is to load the customer information and the facility information before you go out to the project. When you're out in the project then and you're working on your tablet, when you pull up the the program, that information will already be there, the map will be there um, waiting for you and you can go up on the roof, outline the section that you want to look at or the section that you want to work in and start adding your deficiencies and your ponding right up on the roof. Then you can come back to your desk and or your laptop or desktop and work um, with the cover letter, make sure everything's spelled right, make sure that you've got everything exactly the way you want it. Um, and then at that point, if everything is the way you want it, you can send the proposal. Whoever you send it to, you will also get a copy. Um, so you can, you can delete people. Um, so I'm sending it to Pam. You can put a message. Please see the attached proposal. Hit send. Now it will take a few minutes to render, but it will, it will send the report out to the customer and uh, send you a copy as well. So if you want to view, print and view the report before sending it to the customer, you can simply send it to yourself. You will get two copies, but you can do that. If you want to print the report, bind the report and deliver it to be able to explain to the building owner exactly what it is that you want them to do, what you found, um, I always think that's a good thing to do and a, uh, it helps to move the sales process forward. So a couple of other points. There are sunshades that you can get on Amazon.com. Sometimes those sunshades will help. Your, your tablet fits right inside your, uh, the sunshade and that helps you when you're up on the roof. They're like 15 bucks. Um, you, just, you have to cut a hole in them for the camera, but I've used them and it works quite well. This does work on tablets only, not phones. So it does work on iOS or Android. You do need a, a Wi-Fi, so when you're on the roof, you can connect, so you can connect through your phone or if you have Wi-Fi or whatever way that you can connect. So if you have any questions, um, you can contact the help desk. And how you contact the help desk, if you notice up here, there is a little question mark. If you click on that question mark, um, you can type your message right in here. It will go to the help desk, and then there's also phone numbers here. So if you're interested in contacting us or if you have a question, feel free to do so and you can do it right inside the program. So that concludes the Proposal Writer training. Thank you.